सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर कार्यक्रम चालू होते कसारा घाट संपला कनेक्टिविटी कशी असेल ते बघतो पण जस्ट म्हंटल कनेक्ट मध्ये राहावं म्हणून मी चालू येस येस सर एक म्हणून पाचच मिनिटात चालू करतोय आपण प्रोग्राम ओके ओके येस सर थँक्यू थँक्यू किनवडेकर आहे का गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार सर अरे गुड मॉर्निंग आवार यू वेलकम किनवडेकर या अलाव केलं ऍडमिट 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 पटपण करायला पाहिजे या लोकांनी हे मलाच करावं लागतं ऍडमिट ऍडमिट ऑफ एटी नाईन झाले हॅलो सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर काही आपल्याला स्पेस ठेवायचे म्हणून मी लिमिटेड वेटिंग ऍड घेते हॅलो बोधनकर सर गुड मॉर्निंग वेटिंग अच्छा अच्छा मॅम यू कॅन अनम्यूट युअर सेल्फ दीपा मॅम मॅम करा अनम्यूट तुम्ही झाले कोस्ट ओके नाही त्या पल्लवी मॅडम बोलतात तिकडून हॅलो हॅलो ऑडिओ गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग वी आर लाईव्ह अँड वी आर ऑन द रेकॉर्डेड सेशन सो यू कॅन स्टार्ट मॅम थँक्यू थँक्यू हॅलो एव्हरीबडी अ व्हेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल Uh, I welcome all the esteemed dignitaries over here. Our main mentor, Dr. Mrudula Fadke, Madam. Uh, Dr. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable time to us. Uh, Dr. Raj Lakshmi Nair, ma'am, from UNICEF Nutrition Department. Thank you so much for your valuable time. 
डॉक्टर उदय बोधनकर सर एक्स पास प्रेसिडेंट माय मेंटर माय रिलेटिव लाइक माय फादर फिगर वेलकम यू सर एंड डॉक्टर यशवंत पाटिल माइके के दो लोग आ गए तो मेरे को अपना ही एरिया लग रहा है and so thank dr ravindr sonone sir for taking all the hard efforts and dr geeta joshi madam for allowing us to take this workshop for maharashtra iit over here in vasantrao medical college uh, vasantrao medical college is not new to us pallavi is here my uh, co medical friend uh, my mbbs has been here i'm from 92 batch so seeing you all second year students third year students it's bringing back all the nostalgia so guys stay tuned to this ecd workshop it's very important because it's going to prime you up for your future career it's very important that you listen to this very intuitively so that you can become a, a future mentor for somebody for ecd Okay. Every child, without any caste, creed, geographical location, financial status, deserves to attain a full developmental potential, best health care, adequate nutrition, emotionally, physically safe and secure environment with good stimulation by caregivers and good education, and that is what the world leaders. and some of the world leaders who are sitting here are trying the, to fulfill the, this through unicef through who through in, indian academy of pediatrics through foxi and through maternal and child health policies the promotive preventive curative rehabilitative and palliative health care <laughs> services will need strengthening and we pediatrician being advocate for these little ones will have to emphasize these level of cares available for parents children to help them grow to their full potential without wasting much of my time because we have to go through multiple lectures whole day till 6:20 pm i will move on to our first talk which will be conducted by dr simin irani on science of early child development dr simin irani ma'am is ex hod of renowned km hospital bombay a very a very famous pediatrician who has contributed more than 100 publications originally a neonatologist now working with unicef and government of maharashtra in areas of early child health development nutrition and newborn health in a public health setting ma'am also is honored with lifetime achievement award from nnf over to you ma'am and thank you for your valuable time डॉक्टर विजयलक्ष्मी Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you, and uh, uh, slides are visible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning. I would first like to thank uh, Rajina, Chief of Nutritionists of UNICEF, for making it possible for all of us to attend this very important session. All pediatrician experts are going to be present there, and I'm sure it will be. a uh, wonderful session throughout the day i would like to thank the mentor dr mridula phadke who is mentoring this program 
and all the participants who are going to be there. And of course, Dr. Upendra, president of IAP. Um, I'm sure all of you will agree when I say that every child have a right to optimal cognitive, social, as well as emotional development, which can carry on throughout the lifetime of the child. But if we ask the parents, what is it that they want from their children? If you ask the parents want their child to be, they will only say, I want our child to be intelligent and smart. Some of them may say they want healthy children and they are ready to spend to anything that will make their children bright kids. In recent years, we have witnessed a number of products which are marketed as food for brain. Each of them will have taller, stronger, sharper quotas. Also, there may be some which will say champions. Some of them will put up pictures of the brain and say there is DHA. And this, if you look in the corner of it, it will be written two to five years. Will you, do you think these children will be able to enhance child's IQ? So if it was so, then estimated 42 to 43% of children under five in our country are failing to full, fulfill their developmental potential. Why is it so? Is it due to poverty? or is it due to poor health, or is it due to poor nutrition? Many of them have developmental delay in the form of vision loss, hearing loss, or they have autism spectrum, or they may have learning disabilities and neurological problems such as CP and all. ECD is a part two of these under the maldevelopment children. And if they can achieve some of the skills which are there, through the uh, nurturing care and a good environment, then something which are adversities to skill development would make them happy. Or is it due to food poverty, which is very well correlated to the pot developmental potential. And you will see in South Asia, which India is a part of it, practically 50% of them have severe food poverty. And there may be only one or two food groups which these children may be taking in. What is it, therefore, that we have to understand? Undernutrition all over the world is known to cause a lot of problems. There may be more than half of the mortality which are under five are due to undernutrition. We know globally 45 million children are wasted, 149 million children are stunted, and 15.9 million children experience both stunting as well as wasting. Why are we really worried about it? Because undernutrition is a high risk factor for developmental delay in cognition as well as in education and also in productivity. And also we know that these children suffer repeated respiratory infections or other infections. And also it is a risk factor for long-term uh, and NCD which can occur in adult patients. When we look at the pace, what is happening in our Maharashtra state, it is alarming to know that stunting, wasting, and undernutrition in the NHFS 5 has increased from NHFS 4. And also, if we look at the India rate, which is on the line, which is there, it is definitely increased. The alarming thing is early initiation of breastfeeding, which has really gone down. And even if we say that exclusive breastfeeding rates have increased, it is mainly in the rural area that this policy is followed or adequate diet, which may be more than NFHS for data, but it is definitely less than what is the India standard. On the health side, we may say we are doing better in Maharashtra. Also, we are doing better as far as low birth weight babies or prevalence of diarrhea and prevalence of pneumonia takes place. But in the interior, if you go the low birth weight, uh, maybe more than 40 to 50%. Today, we know that WHO has released about premature and low birth weight babies care. And nearly 1 million premature babies die and equal number have developmental delay in the form of loss of vision, hearing, as also it is mainly for learning. Why is it that we have such good result on the health side, whereas we have poor result on the nutrition side? 
it's very clear that we have very good facilities, power structure, equipment, and manpower who have got all the expertise, and we are able to salvage extreme preterm babies such as 24, 25 weeks and extreme low birth weight babies. Maybe because of that or the follow-up that we have got stunting wasting increase in our state. So what do we have? We should first focus shift from salvation, I mean, from survival. We feel that ECD may be a pathway which can integrate with other sectors and it can enable the pregnant woman as well as the children. So what do we have? Everyone emphasis on first thousand days and the power of the first thousand days starts from day one of conceptus, as you all know, till the child reaches the two years. Why it is important? Because this is a period where the maximum brain grows as well as the physical growth of the child is there. Who is responsible for it? 270 days is one of the most important determining factor for the child's future development. And that is entirely dependent upon the mother. And I would like to stress here that many times we do have adolescent girls who can become mothers. There are two groups, those who are from 10 to 14 and the others which are 15 to 19. And these young girls, many of them we have seen are pregnant on 13 or 14 years. That means a child is growing in a child who is anemic. 59% of these girls are anemic. And in our country, between 23 to 25% of the girls marry early and they may experience physical, sexual and emotional abuse. What we should really do is put up education. That is the best way if we can and make them go up to 21 years and then they can start what they like. Nutrition plays a very major role. Various nutrients which are important also for the growth of these girls, also for pregnant women. But many, most important, it is the brain which requires most of these nutrients. So when we have a pregnant woman, same scenario, 52% are anemic, 58% of women only have four antenatal, that is full four antenatal checkups. What we have to really understand is the mother is baby's most important thing to survival of that child. So optimal nutrition before, during, post pregnancy, right up to two years, is a very important factor that we have to understand. Because these, the mothers, if they are healthy, then we can have a healthy baby because we are always worried that if a mother has got hypertension or diabetes or obesity, many of these factors plays a role in having poor iron store in the baby. And therefore, majority of these delays can occur because of that. Mother's nutrition plus CCC, there is no smoking, tobacco, alcohol, and ultra-processed food, which is very freely available nowadays in urban as well as in rural area, plays a very important role in seeing that the brain is not properly developed. They have got oxidative, the stress of these can cause important thing in bringing about uh, uh, synaptogenesis, which are always hampered. And they can bring about the blood-brain barrier because of this oxidative stress, which can prevent the child from having normal growth. So we do understand to take weight as well as Newark and most important cut off his mother's height and weight because they are supposed, these are primarily things to give rise to low birth weight babies or extreme preterm delivery. So what are the stages of development? It is up to birth, that is 270 days, the baby is born. This is a very important place where some neurological problem can occur if a baby does not cry and the baby is not properly resuscitated. These babies can have birth asphyxia, which may not be recognized at birth, but later on, they may have neurological problem. Many of them have cerebral palsy or uh, cognitive deficiency. So what does science tell us? Science tells us that brain is not born, brain is built. And the factors which are important in building the brain is first is nutrition, prevention of toxic um, stress, which is another very important thing. And third is a very congenial stimulating environment, which every child and mother likes it. 
So the brain develops right from day one of conceptus, maximum, of course, up to two years, but we know that it continues up to uh, adulthood. 100 billion neurons in the human brains are there by 40 weeks of gestation, with a very good stimulating environment and a very responsive relationship. One million neuron connection every second occurs in the first thousand days. And thereafter, there is 1,000 neural connections formed every second through stimulation. It is important for us to understand that positive stimulation is causes brain development better. If there is any negative experience, then we find the connectivity uh, goes down. So what is important for this development of the brain? Brain is not the homogeneous organ. There are different say, regions which are present in the day and they develop at various times. Therefore, we know that by one week, you have a neural tube which is formed and seven weeks onwards, there are neurons which are already uh, being built up in that neural tube and continuously these neurons, that is neuralization which takes place, there is proliferation, right? You can see from first week onwards, then there is differentiation and migration of these neurons to various centers in the brain where they have to perform different actions. Synaptogenesis, which is a very important thing, which occurs with every stimulation that the child gets. The program cell that apoptosis occurs wherever it is not necessary, the brain cells immediately goes out. But the pruning and myelination, which are very important, which starts basically important from 24 to 42 weeks, and myelination is maximum from 32 to 42 weeks. And these are mainstay which are there. We know that nutrition plays a very important role. And each region which is there requires different types of nutrition for global development of the brain. It is protein, carbohydrate, uh, long tail polyunsaturated fatty acid, iron, zinc, iodine, very, very important. And also vitamin A for the global development and copper. If we go to the dendrites and the myelination tissue, they additionally require selenium for the myelination. So we are aware that basically if a mother's health and nutrition, which helps the brain to develop in utero, has all these nutrients in the nutrition, the brain development takes very properly and adequately. Also, there are certain times and events in the life of a child when the nutrition goes down or there may be toxic stress. Depending upon this, the different parts of the brain gets affected. But we have to remember, it depends upon the time, the dose and the duration of the factors which are prevailing. When we ask for what is this uh, uh, immediately programmed developmental supportive care, it is actually what is happening is it is the structured care environment which helps the brain of a newborn to grow and neurobehavior forms. Also, it brings about stability of the autonomic nervous system. The motor as well as the sensory system is well developed. In fact, what we hope with this, there should be intact survival of the child and a proper neurodevelopment that should take place in these babies. I only want to show you one thing, that the brain actually grows maximum in the last trimester. The sulci and the gyri which are present are always there from 36, 38 to 40, 40 weeks. And this differential neural takes place. So brain being plasticity, it can bear certain stress or be a structure and form, but it can come out from this vulnerability to a proper shape if we take care of its nutrition, health, as well as take care of prevention of anemia. So what actually is the uh, goal or what is the indication of ECD? Its only thing is that it wants the child to have proper developmental milestones. We know that in the very early years, when a child is growing, they are growing at a speed which is absolutely unbelievable by the way they bring up certain things. They are every day, every moment of every day, they are learning, they are moving around, they are exploring. 
And the speed with which they are doing this is um, in, in, completely unimaginable by us. So what happens at that time? The brain is also growing. The way the baby is stimulated, the brain is also growing at that very speed. So you know that when the baby is born, the brain is already 25 to 30 percent developed because when it is in utero in the last trimester, when the hearing and the vision fibers are developed, it is entirely dependent upon the external caregivers, that is the parents or anybody who have a very congenial environment, happy environment. And the internal caretaker is the fetus. The fetus tries to say, oh, I know this is a very good environment. I'm going to have good parents around me. If it is negative, then you will find that the brain development also goes down. By two years, 80% of the brain is formed, whereas the physical growth is 50% of the adult. And the brain continues to grow in the volume. So when a baby is born, if it is a preterm baby, you will see there are not 100 billion neurons, there may be 70 or 80, and there are very few synaptogenesis. In a newborn, again, there are 100 billion neurons. But if you compare the ones of the synaptogenesis which takes place, it is less because the newborn is born and it has to be stimulated right from the day the baby is born. It continues on. And throughout the first two years of the child's life, the connection between the neuron grows at a speed and complexities that is never again repeated in a lifetime. In fact, it is said that it is twice the amount that is there in an adult and a newborn of two years, which is their maximum, you will find that the two-year-old child's experience in taking in things is far better than an adult is. If you look at the six-year-old child's connectivity, you will see it is less than what is four or five-year-old child. That means by the time this overproduction, which is occurring and proliferation, which is occurring, it is refining. That is the being saying pruning. That is this maximum connectivity does not allow the brain to train properly. Say a five-year-old child can slap the father, but a six-year-old child will think, oh no, this is my father, this is my teacher. He will not do it. Because by that time, it is pruned and the brain is now able to decide what is right and what is wrong. So there is a time in the development of the brain when the brain is primed to learn different things. And that is the first and the most important thing is the sensory pathway. So hearing and vision right in utero, as I've already told you, the baby can hear and he can find out what is happening around. Then comes the language and motor. And the maximum is the cognitive development, which we all want our children to be intellectual and they grow up so that the future is very well settled. This is where the cognitive development is maximum at one year and it continues on right up to the adult phase. So we have most important thing which I've told you is protein. Protein is global brain development. The hippocampus, the striatum, the cerebellum, the cerebrum all requires protein in it. Carbohydrate is equally necessary for the energy of the brain. The long tail polyunsaturated fatty acid is also a very important thing for the whole brain, but it is necessary for cell membrane, which is connecting the myelin, uh, myelination for that, and the nerves. And this synaptogenesis is basically depending upon the long tail polyunsaturated fatty acid. Zinc, which is not given any importance, but it is one which regulates our autonomous nervous system, our heart rate, respiratory rate, and also development of the memory and learning. Many of the children who have zinc deficiency have learning disabilities, which may be because of zinc, iron, and iodine. Iodine is very important for thyroid hormone, and we know that it is one which can prevent brain damage, that is hypothyroid. And also the connectivity that is 100 billion neuron and the synaptogenesis which takes place is because of ID. And is one which we must definitely take care because our whole population, our children, our mothers have deficiency and it is actually a neurotransmitter and it is very important for memory. You all know that if a child 
who has iron deficiency will never play. A child never likes to sit around. He likes to play around. But those who are anemic severely, they just like to lie down their lethargy and all. And finally, folic acid, B12, B6, iron are very important for neural tube. And if deficiency is there in the first 100 year, days, then we know that neural tube defect is very easily seen. What is growth? Growth is measured by anthropometric measurement. What is development? And that is what we are looking forward is involves the biological, psychological, and emotional changes that occurs in human beings between birth and conclusion of adolescence. The most important thing is the guide, which we always say that individualized uh, training which we give. What is the necessity is every child, when we talk of development, it is an interaction of the child with the safe environment. What is nurturing care? Nurturing care is also a very safe environment, a caring environment, which looks after the <clears throat> needs of the child's nutrition. It looks after the health of the child and also looks after the responsive care for the child. It is emotionally very well supportive. Developmentally, it is stimulating. And it has got different inroads and pathways and opportunity for the child to play and explore. And the most important thing, it also prevents, protects the child from various adversities. If a nurturing care is there when the brain is developing, then a child will not only survive, but it will reach its full potential that what is we are looking for. And what is early child development? It measures the outcome of what is nurturing care of the child. So if we have to, nurturing care can be given to all children, but it is mainly focused up to three years for the simple reason the brain is maximally grown at that time and the future of the child completely depends upon that. So the <clears throat> environment which are very important are government policy, they should take importance of it and include in their policy is one of the most important factor for public health. Also the supporting services from various such as uh, nutrition is there, then we should have education, we should have protection as well as wash. And most important are the caregivers. The caregivers can be parents, they can be peers, they can be neighbors, they can be ASHA workers, they can be even nurses, doctors and everybody. So that is the basis of it. So what is the road to the baby's brain? First, it starts with many hearts. The child loves to have everybody looking after it, cuddling it in a soothing way. That is when he's born. Goes through a family's mind. They're wondering what should we do for this child that will make my child happy. And so the first step that is to make the environment good. Third, let the child follow. We should follow what the child wants. If the child wants to play in the calling, he wants to play ball, football, he wants to play with toys, then we should make an enabling environment for the child to play. The child loves terraces and rush fun moments. Being with a caring adult. See, this is responsive care. Sip, peers, cuddling, eating, singing songs, telling them stories making them play whatever we are doing. They are good imitators, and that is what we should encourage them. Use home things, please. The best toy that a newborn up to one or two months is a parent's face. There is no need to buy any toys from outside, and that is what we should do. We should play with them. We should talk with them. They should learn us, and if unless and until we do that, a child, when he comes to being able to walk and talk, he knows the home environment so well. He knows what is around the home, how he can play with the home thing, how he can play with things around. So the skills and development that is there, the child learns to protect himself so that he is able to solve problems, not to bang himself any, into tables or chairs. He knows how to move around in a proper way. So when a baby is born, he's got all the sensory inputs that you and I have. And therefore, we should see that we encourage this. So the seven neuroprotective core measurements for family-centered development is a healing environment that is touch, smell, taste, hearing, and vision. These are protected and enable the child to move in that way by 
partnering with families, families, friends, all our caregivers who are present there, who come to visit, they can make a lot of importance to this child who are growing. Optimizing nutrition, which is if we can take care of a child and make nutrition the prime thing, we have made the future of the child. Because that is what is really required for the child to grow. Importance is of sleeping the child. We make an environment congenial, not to make too much noise, not to have bright lights, make a child in a cutting just as the child was in the womb if we can give a similar position to the child the child can sleep beautifully minimizing stress stress is something which can cause a lot of problems it can cause oxidative stress this can cause mainly causing inflammation brain is uh, affected by that and all everything goes in a haywire in the brain when there is too much stress around and take care of the skin because they can be hypothermic. They may have a lot of fluid loss from there. So all these seven core protective parts are very, very essential if we want to take care of the child. So let us see today being the day of preterm and low birth weight babies. How do we make ECD important from there? Give them a protective similarly to the nesting way in which we take care of these tiny babies. They can sleep well and the brain REM is very important for the development of the brain. Touch is one thing which really suits the child. So he has been in utero for 40 to 42 weeks. Constantly, the amniotic fluid is touching Sorry, him. Madam, uh, I'm afraid to interrupt you. Pain uh, factor can go down if you do any procedure okay. with touch. And also the daily activities teach the mother how to feed if it's preterm. But the best care is giving kangaroo mother care. Kangaroo mother care is a protective phase. And we know a child, when he's born, he's got all the factors, vision, speech development, emotional, motor development, language. All these are properly developed for the child to survive and thrive. So the early moments which are important, which allows the brain to grow is initial breastfeeding right in the labor room. The baby crawl, which all of you are aware of it, take care of the temperature of the baby. But most important, if you look in this picture, is how the mother looks at the baby. The baby's eyes are slightly open and is listening to the mother. She's smiling, whether the baby sees that or not. But he feels that because he feels the mother's smell, the mother's odor. His hand has got that very typical amniotic fluid, which he loves it. And he loves the same smell of the mother. The KMC is also given to all our tiny babies who are stable. Even if the baby is on CPAP and all we are giving or IV drip, we can give kangaroo mother care. This is the best way a baby can live, thrive. And even you look at the, this little tiny babies whose eyes open and the mother is talking to the baby, so she's listening. And what it provides is all the seven core components of neuroprotective, which I've told you is there. It provides opportunity for partnering with families, each and every member, father, mother, grandmother, everybody can give it. It facilitates support, is positioning. It safeguards the child from that maternal odor. She loves it and she sleeps beautifully on the mother's chest. It decreases the pain and stress and it protects the child from thermoregulation, humidity. And let me tell you, these children grow far better than when they are outside and they are better off in getting home and also they are protected from infection. Optimal nutrition by increasing milk supply and it promotes breastfeeding. We all know that the baby's position is very important and the baby is properly touched. The flow of the milk also increases, which is very rich in long chain polyunsaturated fatty acid. It's very, very important for the brain of the body. I am only going to show you this child where the father has a very soft voice. He was talking to this baby when the baby was in utero. And you can see no, newborn babies always have the thumb in, but you can open up because of the beautiful cuddling, the beautiful smile. Baby is also having eye-to-eye -eye contact, which is very uh, difficult in a newborn, but you can see how beautifully the baby is stimulated by this father. So we come for guide for monitoring the child's development. And it is very important. The philosophy is that it is being with children. The caregivers are being with children. We respect them. 
it is not a checklist it is no score no development age no stimulus stigmatism but it is very important it is universal inclusive and it is individualized we don't consider that it is age based or it is generic it is every child is individually questioned by the caregiver and make a decision it is not didactic it is comprehensive and it is culturally responsive so how do we go how does it help us it is basically you ask the caregiver you listen very clearly you show respect this is what is very important every caregiver whoever it is we have to show respect you will listen to them we make our own observation we praise them for the positive things that they are telling us and we always involve the community and the family we assess the child's development nurturing care environment what we have told you and how the family plans to support the development and how they will follow up we follow up these families and each and every step when we find the child has not reached what we want we go back and see to it how we can intervene to see that the child gets a good one development there is responsive care and the various domains which you all know the various domains are there there is uh, language which is receptive and responsive there is gross motor fine motor there is play and there is interaction with it the first talk where of course it's a video but i will just tell you the father talks and it's a newborn you can see the child less movement is there that is trying to stare at the father we have a 4 to 6 months old the motor miles looks fine the palm has opened up the child is beautifully talking i am sorry we can't show that but the mother is talking and the baby is talking in the own way a a u a we have a 9 month old child who uh, uh, who likes to play peekaboo and she demonstrates that and a beautifully pincer grass this little fellow is with his father and he picks up each and every vegetable it tells the name it is he recognizes they can tell the name this is bhaji this is gawar this is tomato whatever they can talk they can tell you the parts of the body they can walk and i'm only this is not a but i want to show you something that this little child is one and a half year old and the father refuses to give what he was eating to this child the child is very inquisitive he tried to find out he tried to find what is hidden over there still the father did not respond so he slapped his father this is just to tell you that the impulsive behavior under age of 5 is a, as neural connections are not yet fully developed like in the adult so we really have to give space and time to them and not so uh, the responsive feeding and responsive care is a reciprocal relationship between children and their caregivers we involve the fathers the grandparents anybody who is ready and who are playing with the child the child is known and the child is seen with them the child signals hunger or satiety through actions and expression just like a newborn does they can also show that they can pick up things try to put things in the mouth so we know the caregiver knows the cues he is being with the child and is comfortable the child is comfortable with them the caregiver's response is very prompt very nurturing very loving and developmentally appropriate so the child experiences the caregiver response the care, responsive care the responsive feeding a part of nurturing care and we have to put stress to it the most important thing that we have to know is as i told you toxic stress this affects the brain in a maximum way if a child does not get its nutrient in his food or what what he eats or he is very inadequate which happens whenever there is we know after pandemic or after any uh, epidemic or anything happens in the family there is no money to buy they are all the time fighting getting job the father comes down the child is observing all this thing in his own mind he is getting depressed what the hell is happening around his brain is going into firing way and he goes into a negative expression this family stress violence child malnutrition has caused many like you can say here it is 250 million children are risk of developmental delay and one thing whenever we are taking care or child comes to us and we have to assess please we must understand the family background in which the child is living 
and that is very very important as you can see typical neuron positive beautifully you can see the neural connections whereas if it is toxic prefrontal cortex and hippocampus they are under toxic stress you can see that the uh, connectivity definitely goes down so we are here what is the outcome of this ecd and the brain um, which is there going on both these children if you look they are of same height the baby in the white you will show she is beautifully dressed and her hair is clean the baby in the black on that she is looking very sick she's got some wound on her leg and uh, she doesn't seem to have clean her body and also you might wonder what it is the fact here is both are of same height so what is ecd what we are trying to do is reduction of stunting and wasting now the child in the dress white dress is 26 months and the child in the black top is 52 months so you can see this child no, sorry stunting uh, we are running short of time for nutrition hello very important uh, for us to understand children who are put in reformed they have to be nurtured also they have to have a very good environment the child is to be stimulated but here you can see the child is just left alone whether his father both parents have died so he is an orphan but if you stimulate like dr michael golden when he was playing with this child after 7 8 days he came around and you can see the change in this child the child's brain the child's acceptance of what is happening this is the same boy who is now playing in the riman home with other boys and stimulating them these are nandurbar children who are already uh, cases of severe acute malnutrition but we have a different way of stimulating them you can see the beautiful picture of the father talking and the little child who you can see there is a boldness she is skinny but she is so much interested in what the father uh, story telling the father is doing so this is what the brain requires wash is one thing which is uh, uh, respected irani uh, madam in uh, making a child grow well and they can play in different different environment we cannot stop a child from playing outside but what we can do is give a clean environment wash them and wet their nails so that they don't catch infections so where should we invest it? the most important place where investment can be done for economic returns and all is uh, in um, this so finally i would say the outcomes of uh, this nurturing care is good health where caregivers are mentally physically healthy in a good antenatal childbirth postnatal adequate nutrition the breastfeeding and then complementary feeding micro responsive care is emotion relation with caregivers caregivers are very sensitive and responsive to the child's cues communication in language there are opportunities to play appropriately and security families and children live in clean safe environment and good hygiene every child will then develop to the full potential this is the impact of ecd we must understand that it is not one person who has to play it is each and every member of the family should support in taking care of the child thank you <laughs> thank you so much irani ma'am for a lucid talk um i will request all the speakers to uh, give importance to the time because we have already started one hour late so uh, be precise and comprehensive when you are presenting your talk it was it was very it was very informative talk ma'am but because of uh, delay in our starting the program uh, it was an excellent talk thank you so much ma'am now we have we have learned the science of uh, early child development sensory stimulation you have seen like how touch smell uh, all these uh, sensations are so important the baby smells mother uh, from right from the intrauterine phase he can feel mother's heart rate right from intrauterine phase and when this baby is born in the first hour which is called a golden hour if that bonding is developed between that one hour then that baby is definitely going to be emotionally physically and mentally stronger than any other child 
so that golden hour is very important this is for the medical students now we have learned the science of ecd we will be going on to the arts of ecd there is an art to science and science in art the two are not enemies but different aspects of both arts and science are avatars of human creativity and good greatest scientists are artists as well to bring the science into the art of ecd we have next next eminent speaker dr subodh gupta dr subodh gupta is from sevagram he is professor and hod of community medicine and he is a pediatrician by training but ventured into public health he has many awards and fellowship to his contributions he through unicef he has supported projects in on ecd throughout the districts of maharashtra and he has continued to be operational for guideline for rbsk that is rashtriya bal suraksha kalyan yojana he also has been involved in india's newborn action plan he has done fellowship from salzburg uh, and he also has done a tuhf uh, uh, fellowship and his main interest are uh, early child development community empowerment and community health actions over to you dr subodh gupta sir and thank you for your time are you there sir dr subodh gupta subodh sir uh, subodh sir are you there kindly unmute yourself yeah hello everyone uh, yeah. yeah so uh, let me share my presentation uh, uh, once again uh, yes sir kindly share thank you Ah. Uh, can you? Yes, yes, sir. It is possible. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers, especially uh, Dr. Sunalne, for inviting me for this uh, uh, talk. Uh, and uh, as uh, 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 it, it has already been uh, informed to you, I am a pediatrician by, but I really get opportunity to talk. Uh, in this uh, kind of gathering of pediatricians, so uh, it's a privilege for me to be talking to you. I'm sorry that I could not make it in person uh, because of university assignment. Uh, uh, Dr. Irani has made my uh, job uh, uh, very easy uh, by presenting the science of early childhood development. And here, my task is to, uh, as already uh, has been told, uh, to present how to uh, actually do it, how to reach parents. And basically, I would be doing that by uh, sharing with you our experience of uh, taking Aramb, an initiative we started uh, in partnership with UNICEF, UNICEF uh, uh, to scale. And while it is being scaled, uh, I must acknowledge uh, uh, that uh, this uh, Aramb initiative basically belongs to the Department of Women and Child Development, uh, uh, ICDS, and uh, Health Department. And UNICEF and MJMS Sevagram are supporting this initiative. Uh, uh, so, uh, 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 yeah, so basically I'm here to tell you regarding uh, uh, this uh, initiative and how we moved from pilot to scale. And in the later part of my presentation, uh, I would uh, uh, try to derive some lessons from this and especially for the group of pediatricians, I understand, who are uh, 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 listening to this. So what Aram is about? 
Arambh is about reaching every child. Madam Irani has already told that it's a right of every child. Nurturing care is right of every child. And it is important that we reach uh, uh, to all of them and help them reach their full potential. Uh, in short, I would also like to tell that nurturing care basically is what each family does for uh, 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 their kids, their children. And uh, Madam Irani has already emphasized that this is uh, um, very, very important during the first few years of life and especially the first three years of life. So in Aram, we are trying to target and reach uh, uh, pregnant women and parents uh, and uh, not only parents, but the whole family and community uh, for promoting nurturing care for every child. So uh, this slide basically shows two uh, uh, photographs and the photograph on the top right is a brain wiring game. One of my colleagues, Dr. Abhishek Rao, uh, 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 he thought of this game and basically we thought of, of this game for uh, uh, during the training program to convey the message of brain wiring to the frontline workers and their supervisors. And at that time, even we did not know that this game will become so popular and will be played in uh, at the community level. The supervisors and frontline workers who got during training, they played this game, actually felt that this would be important to take this message to every a uh, 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 parent and they are utilizing this game brain wiring game extensively to reach all of them uh, uh, this game probably has been played several thousand times in uh, uh, most of the villages in maharashtra the other photograph that you see on the uh, lower left side is uh, from one of the Palak Melawa, the parents' fair that we organize uh, uh, through Aram initiative or under this initiative. And this shows a Sarpanch briefing uh, uh, the importance of early childhood development and nurturing care to the community members. So basically through Aram, we are trying to make nurturing aspirational and we are using whole of society approach while doing so. Uh, for any program at community level and especially for maternal and child health re related issues, these two frontline functionaries, the Anganwadi worker and Ashraj are going to be the pillars. And I understand they would remain so for several decades to come. Uh, uh, so we are uh, in Aram, we are utilizing them, both of them in every village. And let me tell about uh, a model for Aram. We thought of this model. Already you have been told about the five components of nurturing care. So responsive caregiving, adequate nutrition, good health, early learning, and uh, security and safety. So under Aram, we thought of four pillars uh, for reaching every uh, uh, parent. And these four pillars are first a pillar of customized messaging. And this customized messaging at community level can happen through home widgets and growth monitoring and promotion sessions. We are extensively using home widgets for this purpose. Similarly, all of us understand that the parents, uh, the fathers and mothers uh, uh, of young children belong to almost the same, same age group and they talk to each other, they learn from each other a lot. So it becomes very important that we adopt peer learning approaches and 
uh, uh, in Maharashtra already there was a circular for mothers meeting uh, 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 to be conducted by Anganwadi workers every week. And we thought of utilizing this opportunity uh, and restructure mothers meeting. I'll tell more about mothers meetings later. Another thing which we fully understand that behavior change does not happen only at individual level. For behavior change to happen, it is important that we build a conducive community norm, a, a community norm which facilitates that behavior change. And for this purpose, we thought of an intervention, a parent sphere or Palak Milava, where we invite the whole village. We actually- I'd uh, like I, you to maintain silence, please. These are important we, lectures going on. And if you all are not interested, then you can walk out. But if you're in the auditorium, full silence will be maintained. Okay. So uh, each uh, uh, parents' fair, we invite uh, 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 lots of community, all community stakeholders, and they participate in this and they learn together. Similarly, they, we utilize social media approaches extensively uh, uh, for disseminating messages related to uh, 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 early childhood development and nurturing care. Apart from these three pillars, uh, 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 we understand that one more important pillar is opportunities at health facilities, especially when parents and family members of young children, they receive health facilities, uh, they are all ears to what health professionals have to say, uh, doctors or nurses, and they are ready to follow the, their advice. So it is important that we utilize this opportunity. Uh, we have tried our bit, uh, but I would say that we have not been able to uh, actually work adequately on this component. And when I'm talking to a group of pediatric clinical pediatricians, I would say this is your area and you can innovate and show to us how opportunities at health facilities could be utilized. While I'm talking about uh, these pillars, I would like to mention that what you see here as the base of this model, uh, appreciative inquiry, skill building, supportive supervision, community mobilization, and intersectoral coordination, these are very, very important. And especially I would say that appreciative inquiry, uh, uh, we feel each a must uh, the kind of environment that uh, 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 is created, and especially when we think of a young child, uh, and when we are talking about child development, it is, you would agree that this is important, that mother is appreciative to the child. And we understand that if the system is not appreciative, uh, 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 the, uh, and uh, we are not appreciative to the frontline workers and their supervisors, they would not be able to transmit this skill uh, to the mothers, fathers, and family members. And similarly, I would say that uh, it is important when uh, we are working as healthcare professionals that uh, uh, the parents, family members, uh, uh, whom we meet uh, 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 when we are seeing a patient, either outpatient or inpatient, you are appreciative. Uh, 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 earlier also, especially I remember through IMNCI, uh, uh, lots of emphasis on appreciating what the parents and family is doing for the child has been emphasized, but I understand a lot needs to be done when it comes to pediatric practice. Similarly, I would say that uh, uh, although these could be very simple messages on play and communication, it's important that we build skills for those providers who are, uh, are disseminating uh, uh, these messages 
who are promoting early childhood development and interacting with parents. So it is important that we uh, uh, work to develop their skills uh, and uh, uh, our own skills also. Uh, so uh, I would uh, uh, say uh, slightly more about these three important approaches, home visits, mother's meeting, and parents' fair. So, uh, in this slide, uh, you see several photographs of home visits. Uh, uh, it's important to realize that home visits uh, uh, through that will not only reach the mothers, but this becomes an important platform to involve fathers and all family members. And the frontline functionaries demonstrate to them using simple home items, how to play and communicate with the child. And our effort always remains that we make all these sessions joyful to the parents and family members. Similarly, parents meeting, uh, uh, the, I was talking about the restructuring and actually the major restructuring was related to uh, uh, making these mothers meeting age category wise. So uh, uh, every week, uh, the frontline functionaries will invite parents with children in different age, age category. First week, it would be for pregnant and lactating women. Second week for uh, uh, parents of children with, uh, uh, with children in the age group six months to two years. And similarly, third and fourth week for children two to four years and four to six years. And when we do these uh, uh, meetings, uh, age group wise, uh, when Anganwadi worker and Asha does this, it becomes easy for them to actually interact with them uh, uh, and talk to them on topics which is relevant to that age group. But our effort is also that these meetings are joyful and experiential and we invite the mothers uh, uh, with their children. So actually the mothers come uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, parents, we also emphasize that at least once in three months, fathers also join these parents meeting. And uh, the frontline functionaries demonstrate to them how to play and communicate with the child using one play activity that she has identified. And then supports other parents to, uh, uh, to continue with that activity. Is there any problem? Uh, I see, uh, I hear lots of questions. And uh, uh, similarly, for Palak Melawa, as I already uh, told, it becomes an event where all stakeholders converge at one point and they learn together. And the Palak Melawa is helping us build a community norm, conducive community norm for uh, uh, growth and development for the child. And we keep uh, 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 this becomes an opportunity through which, again, we can deliver all components of nurturing care, all five components of nurturing care. But when we think about what is one core element uh, uh, behind uh, uh, RM, so what comes to our mind is it's a capacity, the training sessions, uh, uh, these are the core approaches. Everything which happens later depends on the training, the skill building of frontline functionaries. And I would like to tell that these training sessions, are uh, we try to create an atmosphere, an environment of joyful learning. These are experiential and hands-on training and it's appreciative and participatory in nature. Some of the comments that we received uh, uh, from our trainees, uh, the uh, uh, master trainers and supervisors, frontline workers are very encouraging. So one of the Anganwadi supervisors after first cycle of training, she told that we never felt we are being trained. We felt as if we are being consulted. So this is also about the kind of respect 
that we give during the training. And it all starts, the appreciative environment starts from there. Similarly, the district program officer, ICDS for Aurangabad uh, Sage regarding Palak Milawa, that whole ECD, which was limited to households initially, has become a community agenda through Palak Milawa. And the last uh, uh, quotation is from a father who tells how he has started enjoying play and communication activities with his child. But it's not only that, the father also participates in uh, giving bath to the child, feed uh, 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 the children, make them sleep, uh, take them in the neighborhood, etc. So uh, let me tell you how this program has been uh, uh, successful and uh, 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 using some data. And we measured, we did actually two surveys. Uh, uh, one was in November, December, 2018, and second was in November, December, 2019. And this was, we were doing this in 10 ICDS projects, uh, uh, six from Aurangabad, and uh, four from Aur Aurangabad and six from Yavatmal. And uh, some of the indicators we measured are shown here. So uh, for home visits, and we asked the parents if uh, uh, a frontline functionary visited them in the last one month. And during this visit, did they talk about uh, play and communication activities? Did they talk about uh, child nutrition? and also about child health. And if answer to all of this was positive, uh, uh, yes, then uh, uh, we considered it positive. So home visits by Anganwadi worker with comprehensive counseling increased from 2% to 53% during this period. Similarly, home visits by ASHA with comprehensive counseling for zero to three years increased from 1% to 29%. Already mothers' meetings were happening, but we again asked them, uh, uh, parents, if they know about a mothers' meeting being conducted in their village. So that increased from 17% to 46%. And we asked them if they attended the mothers' meeting and uh, 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 in that case, watch the session, uh, uh, comprehensive counseling means uh, uh, topics on nutrition, health, and play and communication, watch being discussed, uh, uh, watch discussed. So uh, uh, it increased from 9% to 42%. Similarly, we saw increase in frequency of complementary feeding, uh, four feeds or more. Uh, those who received at least four food groups in last 24 hours, uh, uh, these also increased, uh, increased although uh, uh, diversity did not increase so much. And then we measured responsive feeding score and it showed improvement uh, uh, from 37% to 50%. And parents who reported play, uh, uh, playing or uh, doing 10 or more play and communication activities in the last three days from 30 to 55%. We also uh, measured the anthropometric indicators and we found that underweight reduced by 7%, stunting by 2% and vesting by 6%. And we utilized for subgroup uh, 24 to 35 months uh, uh, and we utilized uh, DST by Bharat Raj to measure their development quotient and Vineland social maturity scale to measure their social quotient and both development quotient and social quotient improved for this group. So uh, after uh, 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 a system, uh, uh, the ICDS and health system was already involved when we were working in 10 ICDS projects and uh, uh, considering the success of uh, uh, this exercise, and uh, I would like to say that uh, the kind of uh, feedback they received from their own uh, uh, staff, the D D uh, DPOs, district program officers, CDPOs, and others, the state decided 
to scale this up in all districts of Maharashtra. So already through uh, support from uh, UNICEF and in partnership with ICDS and health, we uh, are scaling this up all over Maharashtra. Already master trainers have been trained for each district's district of Maharashtra. We utilize a casket training where uh, uh, RM team members and key trainers uh, 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 train uh, uh, the master trainers. And then the master trainers uh, who are 12, about 12 to 20 uh, uh, in each district, they would train all supervisors. And then these supervisors will train the ECD providers, or basically Anganwadi workers and ASHA. So uh, I would like to tell you what are the lessons that we learned at program level. And I would uh, like to emphasize on a few points. We already understand that the first 1000 days are uh, important, very critical phase of life. And Aram demonstrates how to reach uh, uh, all of these parents uh, through uh, community best approach. I must say that only route that you will be able to reach children zero to three are through parents. So basically, this is becomes a parenting program. Uh, one important thing that we learned is uh, early learning is probably the best entry point for all elements of nurturing. Uh, when you talk to parents and tell them how their child may reach their full potential. They want to listen to this. So uh, uh, when we make this aspirational, they listen to you and they uh, 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 comply with the advice. And when it is about play and communi uh, uh, communication, this also makes parenting joyful, uh, uh, a happy family. And they will uh, listen to not only your messages related to play and communication, but all other messages, uh, let it be related to nutrition or health and other things. So early learning is the best entry point. And uh, I feel now that probably we have missed the, this opportunity all these years. Uh, then another learning is, that there are huge opportunities available within the system itself, the way the system has grown. And in every village of our country today, we have Anganwadi worker and also ASHA. So how to utilize them? We map our opportunities and utilize them. That uh, 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 exercise is very, very important. Uh, Towards the end, I would like to say that actually Aram is a journey and uh, this has been a journey for uh, all of us at Sevagram. I would say it has been a journey for 20 years and it, it, it is a kind of personal journey also for me. So we started very small uh, uh, in a project we were implementing in 2003 to nine and uh, there we started experimenting with a model of parenting education through village level workshops. We called it Palakattwa Karishala. And uh, we also learned to engage with health and ICDS sector. Later, we got an opportunity to expand this program initially. Uh, uh, in uh, We started with 10,000 population in 2012, and then we started working with 100,000 population uh, uh, with help of, uh, uh, under a project which was WHO supported. And then since 2018, uh, uh, we are working uh, with UNICEF support, and this journey has been amazing, especially when we, uh, 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 in partnership with UNICEF, we scaled up this in 10 ICDS projects. It was a very difficult decision for us because uh, being a medical college, we did not have experience of uh, uh, working with such a large population, about uh, uh, 12 lakhs population at that time. And today we are working in whole of Maharashtra, so uh, uh, almost uh, 
more than 12 crore population. And uh, uh, this has been a great learning for us, how a program can move to uh, uh, from a pilot stage to a uh, uh, scale. And uh, I think uh, I would like to tell that uh, probably professionals should aspire for it and they should work towards it, how an idea can scale. But if you believe in something, it would be possible. And it's not a belief of uh, uh, one individual or a few of us, but this is a belief of the whole team. So we are now also in dialogue with Niti Ayog, and it is quite possible that uh, this program may get scaled up at national level. Now, for uh, uh, my pediatrics colleagues, uh, especially uh, uh, all of you are doing clinical pediatrics. Today, I don't do uh, clinical pediatrics. I have moved to public health, basically. So I thought of a few messages. Uh, as I already told, the uh, there are huge opportunities available in health facilities uh, for promoting early childhood development. We need to map those opportunities and also map our resources. It's not that only doctors have to do counseling. We understand doctors are, uh, could be very busy. Uh, uh, you will have a very busy OPD and during inpatient also, you may not have adequate time to personally counsel all uh, uh, the parents who are coming with children in the OPD. But if you map out resources, it would be possible. You will be able to find a cadre or you will be able to build a cadre who does this. Util, uh, uh, utilize opportunities and, uh, 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 and actually uh, uh, do this. And when we are doing this, let us think beyond box. So uh, there could be many opportunities, like social media is available. It's not only about counseling parents one is to one, but group sessions could be possible. Those who are admitted in the ward, there could be possibilities of uh, 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 group uh, learning, a uh, uh, kind of meeting, especially in NRCs. Uh, you can develop a, a play a corner in your ward uh, and uh, uh, try to disseminate these messages. There could be huge opportunities. But it would be important that we build a team and build their skills. And we develop a, a whole ecosystem for empowering parents and family members wherever we are working. Let it be a public setting or a private se setting. I think uh, 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 it's very important. And let me tell you that the parents, the family members, value messages related to uh, nurturing care and especially play and communication a lot. So you will get dividend wherever you are working and promoting early childhood development. But another important thing I would like to say is responsivity. Uh, uh, there are two terms, sensitivity and responsivity. So basically, uh, being sensitive to the cues and responding to that is the core element. And I would urge that this is not only uh, about uh, making our system sensitive and responsive to the parents, but we need to work towards making our system sensitive and responsive in all respects. So uh, uh, if we are working as teachers, are we sensitive and responsive to our students, uh, to our staff? And that part would be very, very important. Build an environment, a respectful and as appreciative environment for everyone. Uh, nurturing care is possible only in this kind of environment. And we cannot make this uh, uh, in isolation, only for parents. When I'm talking about responsivity, sometimes I 
debate in my mind are our messages related to child feeding responses. Uh, I feel that many times when it comes to child feeding, complementary feeding, we had been we have been instructing parents and we had been uh, uh, telling uh, uh, them only those things which can be measured. Probably this was the limitation of research conducted on complementary feeding. So we tell them what to feed to the child. We tell them how much to feed and how often to feed. But we usually do not tell them how to do this. And what happens if you overemphasize and on quantity, frequency, and uh, uh, what to feed, and do not tell them that they need to be responsive, every mother and parent would force feed. The kind of pressure we build on the mother uh, 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 for child feeding, they are forced to force feed. So it is important for all of us to learn how to promote responsive feeding. And I uh, have started believing that uh, uh, nature has given uh, 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 our uh, children also uh, uh, those skills and uh, uh, th that uh, uh, they would feed themselves very early. And uh, uh, they uh, uh, can express their hunger cues the role of parents when it comes to responsive feeding is limited to uh, uh, be a good role model and uh, to offer healthy items. And it is for the children to decide how much they want to eat. Okay, so we need to uh, uh, tell each parent to understand the hunger and satiety cues and inform them, tell them that they need to respect these cues. And if it is done along with uh, uh, a play and communication act activity, uh, uh, good nurturing environment, I feel that uh, 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 this is going to help child nutrition in a long term. So uh, I have started believing that uh, the problem of malnutrition in our country is not about those hard things, the amount of food and the number uh, it's, uh, of times we feed the child, but this is about soft skills. So are we ready to build those soft skills to improve nutrition of our children? Uh, I've taken this from a nurturing care framework given by WHO and UNICEF. And uh, uh, emphasizing on importance of early childhood development, uh, uh, the document uh, uh, classifies uh, uh, or categorizes uh, uh, the population in three categories. So all caregivers and children is, uh, is at the base. And then families and children who are at risk is in the middle and families of children with additional needs is at top. The number is less, but these families will require more specialized services. So on one hand, we need to have services, messaging for all caregivers and children and uh, that intensity would be low, but this needs to happen in every setting. And then uh, uh, for those who are at risk, we should have targeted support. And then we should have more intensive and specialized services for families with children with additional needs. And uh, mm -hmm. when, uh, uh, especially you, the group of pediatricians uh, have a role to play at each level. And we all understand that in our country, we lack for all levels. So while we emphasize, uh, I, I would like to emphasize that you should try to reach all caregivers and children, but there should be efforts to uh, 
provide targeted support to families at risk. And uh, uh, you have several settings, uh, uh, those children who are admitted in NICU, uh, those ch uh, children who are admitted in NRC, uh, if you have a special uh, in OPD, uh, malnourished children. So how to build targeted support, more targeted support for them, it would be important. And gradually, we also need to build intensive support uh, 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 for families and uh, 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 children with additional needs. Pediatrics has in uh, uh, India has to evolve in this direction. And so basically, uh, especially addressing the young pediatricians, I would like to say that we need to understand the changing context. The context is changing. There's a huge demographic change. And earlier, we were worried about uh, our main attention was child survival. But gradually, uh, 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 it is important when child survival has improved with all the efforts uh, which has come from uh, uh, the health and other sectors, it is uh, uh, important that we understand the context. And this uh, uh, is the time when we start thinking how to help every child reach full potential. And pediatricians have to play an important role. When I'm talking about changing context, this is also that solutions are also changing. So uh, uh, we have new opportunities available with us to reach people and let us also utilize that opportunity. So while the young uh, uh, professionals, pediatricians here, they are planning for the, their future, their career, they should think uh, uh, where they are needed and what would be the future of pediatrics. The pediatrics, your teachers have practiced that probably is different than the pediatrics you are going to practice because the needs of the society is going to change and the tools that we have in our hand is going to change. So uh, with this, I'm going to end. And uh, with this quotation, if we change the beginning of the story, we change the whole story. And uh, uh, I also believe that this is this, this not only uh, 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 about, this quotation is about the early years of life, but uh, being a teacher, I feel that for each student that takes admission uh, in medical college, they start uh, uh, their career as doctor, probably this quotation fits there also. And I would say that when a, a, a young uh, uh, postgraduate students joins a department, this quotation fits there also. So the beginning of the story, when you have started your pediatric journey, uh, uh, that would change the whole story of your career. Thank you so much. You are not audible uh, uh, to me. Uh, is there a problem? Extremely sorry, sir. I just didn't tell you. Yeah. Maybe just looking forward for inauguration. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much, Subhad Gupta, sir, for, for, for extracting your time from examination and uh, enlightening us on uh, the RM program. And it is a good learning curve for the new pediatrician like us and the budding pediatricians who will be uh, like uh, mentoring in future to their uh, undergraduate students. So this is definitely a grassroots level teaching, definitely a arts of early childhood development. Um, now all the dignitaries are here. So we will be uh, starting our inauguration program. Uh, thanks a lot for your time once again, sir.
Um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'm sorry that I will not be able to continue yeah, uh, uh, with the inauguration because I'll have to leave for the examination. We would love to take your presence, sir. But if you have to be there, then um, uh, most welcome, sir. But thanks a lot for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now we'll start with our inauguration. Now the most awaited program we all have been waiting for uh, the inauguration of our early child development workshop. Uh, our eminent uh, speaker and our main mentor, Dr. Rudula Patke Madam, is here. She's ex dean of PJMC. She's an ex DMER. Uh, Madam has uh, been an ex vice chancellor of MUHS. She's advisor to WHO and UNICEF and she's a teacher of teachers. Yeah. So we are very fortunate, ma'am, to have you here and very lucky. And all the students are also very lucky. And I should say I am very lucky to witness this program in, in, in your presence, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Uh, kindly raise the dice. No, no, ma'am. It's a part of inauguration, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest is Dr. Raj Lakshmi Nair. She's a she is uh, uh, she's heading child development and nutrition program for UNICEF since last twenty years, and has been really played a major role for severe acute malnutrition for uh, from 2008 and 2013. Madam has uh, been uh, worked on a large scale pilot in management of ch children with severe acute malnutrition in Nandurbar using global protocols resulting a generation of evidence for scale up at state level. Thank you, my, Madam, for your time. Our next guest is none other than Dr. Upendra Kinjwadekar, sir, president uh, elect for 2022 23 Sir, I'll have to study one day in CV. Man of the moment. Our next guest, of, uh, guest is Dr. Heman Gangolia, sir. Our Maharashtra Academy President, very humble pediatrician, an easy to approach pediatrician with lots of accolades in his hat. Our next, next guest is Dr. Uday Bodhankar, sir, my mentor, my relative, my, my Kika person, Hakka person, I can say. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Our next case is Dean Madam, Pati, Dr. Patil Madam. Madam is MS of Hanwati, and from her busy schedule, she has given time for this early child development health program that is really appreciated. <laughs> Our next guest is treasurer of Central IIP, Dr. Samir Dalwai, sir. Frequent visitor to Nashi. Uh, our next guest is Dr. Our own Dr. Adi Patil, sir. Organizing chairperson, 
Lakhendar for second time with whopping 2,000 votes uh, and a th true academician. Next case is Dr. Milin Bharadia, Secretary of our MAAP, Chief Organizing Secretary of Ma uh, our MAAPEDICON. Welcome, Sharmila, ma'am. Our next guest is Dr. Pramila Menon, madam. Our next guest is uh, Dr. Amol Pawar, sir, secretary of Maha AP. Our own president, Dr. Kedar Malvatkar, sir. Welcome, sir. Dr. We are lucky to have Dr. Yashwan Patil, sir, also giving time for this early childhood program. Uh, he is chairperson for Comhag UK, along with Dr. Uday Bodhankar, sir. Thank you, sir, for your time. The next guest is Dr. Suchita Kinjwadekar, madam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Our faculty for safe motherhood and happy motherhood. She will be giving a talk, but she's also our guest. Thank you so much, ma'am. And la, uh, Dr. Ravindra Sonone, sir, HOD of Pediatrics, past president of Dr. Sharmila Kulkati ma'am is also here and she's our main scientific chairperson. Uh, I'll request Dr. Ramakan Party, sir. We'll start the felicitation. Yeah. I'll request Adi Party, sir, to felicitate Dr. Rudula Farke, madam. I request Dr. Milin Bharadia, sir, to felicitate Dr. Kupendra Kinjavadekar, sir. Request Milin Bharadia, sir, to felicitate Dr. Kupendra Kinjavadekar, sir. Yes, Adi Patil, sir, to felicitate Dr. Raj Lakshmi Nair, ma'am. Fantastic. I request Dr. Amol Pawar, sir, to felicitate Pramila Menon, madam. I request Dr. Malvatkar, sir, to felicitate Dr. Uday Bodhankar, sir, please. Ma'am, please. 
I request Dr. R. D. Patil, sir, to felicitate Dr. Heman Gangolia, sir. R. D. Patil, sir. I request Dr. Milim Bharadiya, sir, to felicitate Dr. Samir Dalwai, sir. I request Dr. Sham Saudhari, sir, to felicitate uh, Dean, Madam, Party, Madam, without whose help, we would not have been able to conduct this six workshop. A big thank you, Madam. I want a big applause. It's a big help. I have been brilliant and final I request Dr. Devi sir to felicitate uh, Dr. Yeshwan Party sir. Dr. Yeshwan Party sir. I request Sharmila ma'am to felicitate Mrs. Kinja madam. Any inauguration is not finished without the lamp lighting. Let's light the lamp for the betterment of the lamp I request Dr. Budula Farke, Madam, Dr. Murnal Patil, Madam, Dr. Kim Jaudekar, Sir, Dr. Rajesh Rajalakshmi Nair, Ma'am, Dr. Heman Gangolia, Sir, Dr. Bodhankar, Sir, and Dr. Samir Talwai, Sir, to kindly grace the lamp lighting. And other organizing team will stand beside to help in uh, facilitating the lamp lighting. Thank 
Let this slide be uh, lighting up and spreading the positivity in care of those malnourished children or socially deprived children from slum area. Let us all pledge that we will not just be doing our private practice, but we will be working for the slum area. We'll be working hands in hand with the UNICEF. We'll be getting all the guidance from eminent people like Mudula Farke Madam, Raj Lakshmi Nair Ma'am, Menan Ma'am. And we'll make a better place for these children to live a healthy, happy, safe and secure environment. Uh, Dr. Girish Charde sir is here. Thank you, sir, for coming all the way from Nagpur, executive body member. Um, Dr. Milin Bharadia sir will felicitate. Dr. Milin Bharadia sir will felicitate Dr. Girish Charde sir. Sir has just won the executive body member post this year. Heartless congratulations, sir. And thanks for your presence for this uh, wonderful workshop. Just 
डॉक्टर देवने मैडम मेडिकल सुप्रिंटेंडेंट ऑफ आर हॉस्पिटल वसंत राव पवार मेडिकल कॉलेज इज हियर आई विल रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर रविंद्र सोनोने सर टू फेलिसिटेट मैडम Thank you so much for your valuable time, ma'am. Thanks a lot. We move on to the speech now. I request our secretary, Dr. Uh, Chief Organizing Secretary, Dr. Milin Bharadiya, sir, to say few words about today's uh, workshop and Mahapedicon 2022. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Mudula Farke, Madam, Dr. Upendra Kinjodekar, Dr. Himan Gangulia. Dr. Samir Dalwai, uh, Dean Madam, Dr. Munal Patil, Uday Modern Karsar, Dr. Kedar Malwat Karsar, Dr. Sharmila Kulkarni Madam, Dr. Amol Pawar, and all my dear friends who are sitting in the audience. I welcome you all to this today's ECD program, which has been sponsored by the UNICEF. I will not take much of your time because there are so many respected dignitaries who are going to speak about the program and everything. I will just like to share one thing. Friends, it's a really personally a very proud moment for me because I graduated from this medical college. It's a really emotional moment for me. I was the first batch student in 1990. We started when? 1990. Thanks to Dr. Vasan, late Dr. Vasan Power, sir. He has given opportunity like me, so many students who were coming from the very small village of this Maharashtra. Friends, if this medical college has not been there, it's impossible to stand here in front of you. And second thing, Dean Madam has taught me the uh, ophthalmology. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Madam. Just like to share with you all, we have started the medical, when we are there, we have started in the KTHM uh, campus. We had just half of this hall was there and we have started the medical college. First year, there was no, uh, like, no hall for the dissection and everything. After six months, we have got a very small hall where we are doing the dissection. In this campus, we have shifted, I think, in the third, third year. Third year, we have shifted friends, but it was a wonderful journey. This medical college has taught us. I think we have mentioned in that when we have got a reunion, colleagues medical college doctor chief organizing secretary of Mahapedicon. मनुन उभार आने ची संधि फक्त है मेडिकल कॉलेज ने की दी मित्रानो यह मेडिकल कॉलेज ने अंकित गोष्ट शिक्षक ने खूब प्रतिकूल परिस्थिति होती फर्स्ट ईयर लामी जब एडमिशन गेट लगता हुआ खूब यह सीनियर्स ने आमला मदद के लिए प्रतिकूल परिस्थिति में देख कसल लड़ाई से अन्य पुरे कसल जाई से फक्त शिक्षण organizing team opportunity to host this um, uh, workshop here. And I would like to thank the HOD, Dr. Ravi Sonone for taking, Sagar Sonone for taking this responsibility. Uh, Single-handedly they have done it. Thank you. I request Dr. R.D. Patil, sir. One man show, Manu Shakta Apan, Sarani Khoop pull over ke lai. It is a teamwork, definitely a teamwork. But sleepless night, Nehmi leader just hota. So over to you, sir. Namaskar, Mitra Ho. Maja Guru, Murudula Phadke Madam, Yanna Pratham Tha Trivar Vandan. Namaskar. 
सन्मान्य व्यासपीठ सगळ्यांची नाव आता घेणार नाही आपल्याला कंटाळा येईल पण तरीही त्यांचं व्यक्तिमत्व व्यासपीठावरचे खूप मोठे मोठे आहेत मित्र हो टू टेक द सेम लाईन ऑफ डॉक्टर मिलिंद भराडिया दॅट दिस कॉलेज हॅज टॉट हिम सो मेनी थिंग्स आणि मग मला इथे एक शेर आठवला जिंदगी का हर पल चुनौतिया भरा है पर जीता वही है जो डट कर खड़ा है असा एक मिसनोमर है कि अर्ली चाइल्डहूड डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट मटल कि आप डेवलपमेंटल पेडियाट्रिशियन आठ हा अर्ली चाइल्डहूड डेवलपमेंट मैं कि मजे तीन वर्ष एम डी कर आणि नंतरचे तेहतीस वर्ष प्रॅक्टिस हा सर्व बालरोग तज्ञांसाठी आणि त्याहूनही महत्वाचं हा सर्व त्या मुलांसाठी हा सर्वात उत्तम कार्यक्रम आहे दिस इज नॉट अर्ली चाइल्डहूड ओनली डेव्हलपमेंट हा प्रत्येक बाळाच्या उन्नतीसाठी त्याच्या आरोग्यासाठीचा सर्वोत्तम कार्यक्रम आहे आणि ह्या अर्ली चाइल्डहूड डेव्हलपमेंट मध्ये जे पाच पिलर्स आहेत जे मुख्य पिलर आहेत ते म्हणजे न्यूट्रिशन गुड हेल्थ रिस्पॉन्सिव्ह केअर गिव्हिंग म्हणजे प्रत्येक व्हिजिटला तुमच्याकडे आलेल्या पालकांना रिस्पॉन्सिव्ह केअर गिव्हिंग जे काय आपल्याला देता येईल ती प्रत्येक संधी आपल्याला साधायचं आहे प्रत्येक संधीचं सुवर्ण संधीत रूपांतर करायचं आहे आणि त्याबरोबरच सेफ्टी अँड सिक्युरिटी चौथा पिलर आणि पाचवा पिलर म्हणजे ऑपॉर्च्युनिटीज ऑफ अर्ली लर्निंग मित्र हो मला अजूनही आठवत की आम्हाला प्रत्येक पेशंटच्या प्रती संवेदना काय आहेत मी ज्या वेळेस ज्युनियर रेसिडेंट होतो मॅडम कडे तुम्ही आता जे आर वन म्हणतात आम्ही एस आर होतो तुम्ही जे आर टू म्हणतात आणि आम्ही सी आर होतो तेव्हा जे आर थ्री आता म्हणतायत सर्व त्यावेळेस मॅडमने आम्हाला काय शिकवलं असेल की पालकांची परिस्थिती काय आहे त्यांच्या अडचणी काय आहे कारण आपण ज्या वेळेस रेसिडेंट असतो रक्त सळसळत असत सगळे जर्नल्स वाचायचे असतात पुस्तकं वाचायचे असतात पण आपण पेशंट आणि पालक वाचायचं विसरतो तो पेशंट आणि पालक कसा वाचायचा त्यांच्या प्रती त्यांच्या प्रती जी एम्पथी संवेदना ही आम्हाला एक्झाम्पलरी लिडरशिप स्किल मधन आणि स्वतःच्या वागणुकीतनं आणि याच्यातनं जे आम्हाला फडके मॅडमने शिकवलंय त्याबद्दल आम्ही सर्व स्टुडंट त्यांचे आयुष्यभर ऋणी आहोत मी तुमचा जास्त वेळ घेणार नाही खूप महामहीम महामहोपाध्याय लोक इथे उपस्थित आहे तुमच्या बरोबरच मी त्यांच्यासाठी त्यांना ऐकण्यासाठी अतिशय उत्सुक आहे आणि ह्या याच्यात मी एकच सांगेन की मी डीन मॅडम ज्यांनी एका शब्दा खातर आणि एक पत्रा खातर आम्हाला ही सगळी सहा वर्कशॉप जी काय आज होणार आहे प्री कॉन्फरन्स वर्कशॉप दोन वर्कशॉप अशोकाला आमचे महाराष्ट्राचे प्रेसिडेंट यांनी त्याचं उद्घाटन केलेलं एन्डोक्रायनोलॉजी अँड व्हेंटिलेशन आणि इथे सहा वर्कशॉप आहेत त्यासाठी जे विविध हॉल्स आणि ही जी फाईव्ह स्टार म्हणता येण्यासारखी पण फार उत्तम म्हणजे ऑडिओ व्हिज्युअल सिस्टीम जी काय उपलब्ध करून दिली आहे मृणाल पाटील मॅडम तुमचं अभिनंदन थँक यू ॲट द सेम टाइम माझे कलीग रवी सोनवणे अँड सागर सोनवणे बॅकबोन ऑफ दिस ऑल वर्कशॉप आणि इट इज एक्झिओमॅटिक व्हेरी सेल्फ एव्हिडंट ज्या पद्धतीने तुम्ही टाळ्याच्या गजरात त्यांचं कारण मला माहितीये सगळ्यांना प्रिलिम नाही येते तर हा त्यांचा मोठेपणा आहे नम्रपणा आहे की तुम्ही टाळ्या मला याच्या करता वाजवल्या तसं नाही आहे सगळे विटनेस आहेत की त्यांनी काय पद्धतीने काम केलं आहे आणि बाकी मी सगळ्या व्यासपीठावरतील डिग्नेटरीज आणि समोर बसलेले माझे सहकारी आणि काही टीचर्स यांना मी वेळ न घेता सगळ्यांना अभिवादन करतो आणि हा कॉन्फरन्स आणि वर्कशॉप सक्सेसफुल करण्यासाठी तुमचं सहकार्य मागतो आहे मित्र हो काही जर गोष्टी तुम्हाला आवडल्या असतील तर ते क्रेडिट सगळ्या आमच्या ऑर्गनायझिंग टीमचं आहे काही कमतरता राहिल्या असतील तर त्याचं सगळा ब्लेम ओनस मी चेअरपर्सन म्हणून माझ्यावर आहे ते फक्त तुम्ही माझ्याकडे करा 
बाकी श्रेय सगळ्या माझ्या ऑर्गनायझिंग टीम ला द्या नमस्कार बरोबर बोलला सर एम्पथी अँड कम्पॅशन इज वॉट इज नीडेड टुडे धकाधकीच जीवन आहे आपल्याला परीक्षा पास करायच्या आहे वॉर्ड वर आपण बघतो रडणार किंचाळणार बाळ पण तेवढीच एम्पथी आणि कम्पॅशन आधी पाटील सरांनी जसं सांगितलं इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट इट इज द क्रक्स ऑफ आर मेडिकल एज्युकेशन बी इन द शूज ऑफ पॅरेंट्स गो थ्रू जस्ट इमॅजिन वॉट दे आर गोइंग थ्रू थँक्यू सर दॅट्स अ व्हेरी गुड गुड लेसन यू हॅव गिव्हन टू अस our next speaker is dr amol patil sir who is uh, secretary oh, wow. amol pawar sir who is secretary second party yes. who is secretary of mahay <laughs> good afternoon everybody it is now afternoon i think uh, respected dais and my dear friends uh, welcome aaplyala मी या प्रसंगी या वर्कशॉप चे मेन कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर रवींद्र सोनवणे सर सागर सोनवणे सर व पूर्ण महा आय पी ची जी महा आय पी एन नाशिक आय पी ची जी ऑर्गनायझिंग टीम आहे त्यांचे आभार मानू इच्छितो की त्यांनी अतिशय चांगल्या पद्धतीने इथं वर्कशॉपची अरेंजमेंट केली आणि डेलिगेटची संख्या बघून हे जे वर्कशॉप आहे ते पूर्णपणे हिट झाल्यासारखंच आहे मृणाल पाटील मॅडमांचाही मी धन्यवाद देतो की त्यांनी सर्व व्यवस्था करण्यासाठी मदत केली आणि पुढील कार्यक्रमासाठी शुभेच्छा देतो धन्यवाद अमोल प्रेसिडेंट महा ए पी डॉक्टर हेमंत गंगोली सर टू से फ्यू वर्ड अबाउट टूडेज वर्कशॉप अँड महापेटी Thank you, sir. Namaste, everybody. Good afternoon. And respected dignitaries on the dais, Sarvanche Naona Geta, Aple Prenastro, Dr. Uday Bodhankar, sir, as well as Aple Pujaniya, madam, Dr. Mudula Fadke, madam, I, and the other several dignitaries on the dais. hearty congratulations and i think so it is a wonderful work done by iip nashik branch to host this mahapedicon excellent and wonderful organizing team led by dr ramakant patil sir and his team as well as this workshop which has been managed by ravindra sonani sir and uh, sagar sonani and uh, ravindra got lots of clap and we heard that <laughs> so and uh, all the i think so the attendees in this hall seems to be ugs or pgs pgs or some of the junior pediatricians mala asa vatta ki ecd varsha matlya varti early child development matlya ki sarva development chi goshti atavto pan mala vatta ami je practice kele almost i have done practice for last 33 years so i practice karta je ami karat tis goshti ecd workshop madhe but it is in a structured manner all five aspect which has been said by dr ama khan sir health nutrition safety early learning and uh, responsive care giving all these five elements are included hum ye nehmi karat asto but that well child visits madhe he karta na he sarva apela kasa implement karta yala pahije practice that is important and one thing more realized जस आम्ही हे वर्कशॉप इज डन ऑल ओव्हर द अक्रॉस द कंट्री ऑलमोस्ट टू हंड्रेड वर्कशॉप फोर्टी वर्कशॉप झोन वाईज हे करत असताना आम्ही जेव्हा पीडियाटिशियन बोलवतो फॉर डेलिगेट्स इज व्हेरी हार्ड टू गेट दर डेलिगेट्स आय मेन दे कम इन अटेंड दे रिअलाइज व्हॉट इज इम्पॉर्टंट पण मला तरी एक जाणवतो सुरुवातीच्या इयरला जे आपण शिकतो मेडिकल कॉलेजमध्ये आणि सुरुवातीच्या प्रॅक्टिसमध्ये तेच आपल्या डोक्यात राहतं इट इज व्हेरी डिफिकल्ट टू चेंज दॅट टाईम नॉलेज आफ्टर वी बिकम सिनियर सो हॅट्स ऑफ समीर दलवाय टू इम्प्लिमेंट दिसरी कॅरी आउट सो मला असं वाटतं की इट्स अ व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट थिंग अँड वी हॅव टू गोड अँड लास्टली आय कन्क्लूड विथ ऑल दी बेस्ट विशेस फॉर दिस वर्कशॉप अँड दिस ह्यूज मेगा इव्हेंट महाकुंभ महापेडिकॉन ऍट महाकुंभ प्लेस नाशिक थँक्यू व्हेरी मच I request Dr. Uday Bodhankar sir to guide us a little bit about ECD and Mahapedikon. Thank you sir. Thank you Dr. Sheetal. In fact, I told her not to give, because I'm going to give a lecture. 
एनी वेरी रिस्पेक्टेड फरके मैडम जी आम सर्वे गुरु है डॉक्टर पाटिल मैडम ऑनरेबल डीन ऑफ दिस मेडिकल फॉर पेस्टिजियस डॉक्टर नायर मैडम हु इज द चीफ ऑफ यूनिसेफ एंड ऑफकोर्स डॉक्टर किन वडेकर प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आई नॉट टेक ऑल द एस्टीम डेलीगेट गेस्ट ऑफ द डायस ऑन द डायस एंड ऑल द स्पीकर एंड ऑल द स्टूडेंट ऑफ एम पी एच एंड ऑल दिस कॉलेज इट्स प्राउड प्रिवेज फॉर मी दैट आई कुड बी हियर आफ्टर ए गैप ऑफ मोर देन टेन टू ट्वेंटी इयर वेन आई फर्स्ट विजिट नाशिक इट वॉर नाइनटीन नाइनटी वेन माय इलेक्शन वॉज देर इन नाइनटी टू आई बिकम द नैशनल प्रेसिडेंट सो आई थिंक आई ओ लॉट ऑफ थिंग आई नो ऑनरेबल लेट डॉक्टर वसंतरा पवार इन टू टू थ्री ऑकेजन बट दे मैडम पाटिल एट दैट टाइम आई कुड नॉट विजिट बट डॉक्टर विद्या परान पे वॉज माय स्टूडेंट वॉज एच ओ डी पेडियाटिक इयर बिकॉज ऑफ हर आई आई कुड विजिट वन दिस कॉलेज Uh, I think way back more than a decade back, but now you, it has come very good. I will not take much time. ECD workshop, Dr. Uh, Langoliya has given you, Dr. Power has given you all the insight, and all the speakers are going to talk. Only request my is that I will request Madam Bharke to felicitate three coordinator, Dr. Sheetal Pagar, Deepa Joshi, Shalaka Bagul, Sir, where, yes. where they are the main yes. coordinator. I don't know whether they, somebody is going to felicitate, but I will request to please felicitate yes. three of them yes. without yes. wasting time. Yes. Please come, yes. we come please on, yes. come, yes. come yes. yeah. Because, because nice in the morning sir. we have been myself Dr. Ashan <laughs> Patil came. Coordinator Sati meets. I mean, you need to. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Ravindra Sunone. Give a big round of applause to Dr. Ravindra Sunone, please. Yeah, my name. Sir, to me, sir, to me, Ran, to me, Ran. To me, sir, Ran. You should be there. Uh, yeah. Because at 8:30 a.m., myself, Dr. Patil came. There were three people: Deepa Doshi, Sheetal, and Shalaka. So I, I thought it's my duty to give his name. Sagar, Sagar sir. Sagar, 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 Sagar sir. Sagar, so no one. I know him very well from Nagpur. Please come. Shalaka Dali. That's a two done. Deepa Doshi. Sagar, Sagar ke. Sheetal Dali pagar. Ta. Sagar, so no one. Give big round applause to Sagar. Okay. After that, I will request Deepa Doshi, Madam. So I, I this is <laughs> Deepa Doshi, Madam. Give her. Okay. In the end, I will request you to give standing ovation to Madam Parke, yes. Nair, and all organ committee. Give a round applause. Thank you. Thank you. राजीव the iip guidelines for malnutrition in 2008 so our friendship goes back yeah. uh, all my dr himan ganguly sir respected chairperson of the conference respected secretary sir it's a pleasure to come here just one thing i would like to say about what people have said so far and if you look at ecd first misconception is not about development in pediatrics it is a development of the whole child what ramakant ji sir said पुस्तक वाचतो आपण अभ्यास करतो पण पालकांना आणि मुलांना वाचत नाही द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट इसेन्स ऑफ इसीडी इज नॉट न्यूट्रिशन इज नॉट गुड हेल्थ इज नॉट वॅक्सिनेशन इज नॉट सेफ्टी अँड सेक्युरिटी इज नॉट अर्ली लर्निंग ऑर डेव्हलपमेंट स्क्रीनिंग द इसेन्स ऑफ अर्ली चाइल्डहूड डेव्हलपमेंट इज रिस्पॉन्सिव्ह केअर गिव्हिंग वॉट इज अ मिनिंग ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिव्ह केअर गिव्हिंग वेन यू कम इन मॅडम इज सिटिंग if madam is not i mean i have to judge looking at madam whether madam is willing to stand up at that time because the lecture is going on madam may not be thinking it right to get up because somebody else's lecture is going on i have to judge that and respond accordingly and touch madam's feet and sit at the side this is responsive care giving it has nothing to do only with pediatrics it has to do in our daily life if we are able Understand that about the child and about the parent. Then the parent will understand about that child, not by our lectures, but by our behavior. We as pediatricians have learned by the behavior of this great lady, by her humility and by her simplicity. 
because if you have to look at child development the child begins where the pediatrician ends yes. it is i am a pediatrician this is my knowledge you can never be responsible to anybody in your life it is only when the i finishes and you comes up that you can do any service and that is exemplified only by the life and teaching of dr fadke thank you so much so i request dr D, uh, dr brunal uh, patil madam to come and say few words very good afternoon and a warm welcome to dr vasanthrao for medical college hospital and research center it's indeed an honor to have the who's who of pediatrics in this college and in this auditorium and even though it would be a repetition it would be a very amiss of me i i wouldn't like take all your names so very warm welcome padke ma'am Dr. Rajinair, Dr. Mangesh, Dr. Uday Bodhankar, Dr. Yashwant Patil, Dr. Upendra Kinjivadikar, Dr. Hemant Gangolia, Dr. Amol Pawar, Dr. Kedar Malwatkar, Dr. Rishikesh Kute, Dr. Ramakant Patil, Dr. Milind Bharadia, Sham Chaudhary, and of course our HOD Ravindra Sonavne, Dr. Sadhir Sonavne. Sorry if I missed a few people on the dais. Sharmila Kulkarni, yes, Sujata Kulwarkar, Dr. Darvi, who just spoke. And early child development, of course, the concept very well explained by all you pediatricians. But I think each one of us sitting here in the auditorium, I think first should thank our mothers that we had a good. uh you know early child development and that's why part of the audience and let us not forget the students who are sitting here i think future parents of this country <laughs> so irrespective of the fact that you all are not into pediatrics or you all are not as delegates of this conference but this early child development surely going to help you in becoming future good parents of this country one of the last lines that i picked up from that lecture was that if you change the beginning of the story you can change the story <laughs> milind milind briefly described how he started his career as a medical student in 1990 he's my next door neighbor to and uh, the story went further ahead because fadke ma'am is here i'd like to go down memory lane in 2007 when i took over as dean and the great dr vasant pawar sir of course uh, put me into the chair and he took me to the university to meet madam she was the vice chancellor of maharashtra university of health sciences and under her blessings in 2009 we started with post graduation in this institute in fact this hospital came up in 2008 and we started with 24 pg seats and today because of her blessings and guidance we have 74 post graduates she gave us a presence in the university within no time she like saw to it that i was vc nominee in the senate vc nominee in the board of studies vc nominee in the academic council so that no no ma'am no this 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 is like how bringing up a child is all about and she has nurtured this college she has seen to it that the college has reached the heights that it is today at and i'm very much grateful and thankful to her for being there in the development of this college from the nascent stage 30 years of course it is due to the blessings of people like ma'am and most importantly because she has been most instrumental because that was the developing stage of the post graduation in this college and 
she has supported us early college development early college early college development so uh, thanks all of you all for yeah. being here and all giving right. that medical college an opportunity to host all of you all and to host such a huge and great conference so thank you so much i'll request uh, dr raj lakshmi nayar ma'am to say a few words thank you so much all the respected uh, dignitaries on the dais and uh, faculties and students who are going to be the future for creating a generation uh, which is a progressive contributing to the progress of this country uh, i represent unicef which is a global organization that is committed to provide the best possible start for children women and adolescents our primary focus is to really reach out to the most deprived and most disadvantaged communities who also has equal rights like many of us and we are here all of us who are very fortunate and rightly said by dean ma'am is because our parents invested in us and provided the best possible nurturing environment to come here to study and take the whole uh, life ahead but there are many who do not even see the first year of their life and there are many who cannot even go to school or complete their school education it's not that they don't want to but the situation forces them and they are not able to continue or achieve their aspirations for which they are struggling and striving unicef is extremely privileged to partner with iap the maha ap and the medical school here to bring this agenda which is attached to everyone and uh, like very clearly uh, dr samir said that we talk of responsive care giving it is not just us but it is also many of them who need the most um this is an opportunity for unicef and uh, i would really like to thank fadke ma'am because i do not belong to the pediatric fraternity i come with a public health nutrition background but i been uh, i got this in roads is thanks to ma'am right from ma'am was when vice chancellor i also want to acknowledge dr bodankar dr patil dr pramila menon and also we are president of iap who has really been pushing this agenda of ecd not just with maharashtra but also at national level jointly with unicef so this whole consultation is to give you the science and the art of implementation and it is possible and it is happening across and we really want to bring the best possible knowledge to all of you thank you so much and hope to interact with many of you as the days consultation goes on thank you so much and now i request dr upendra kinchwa dr upendra kinchwa udekar sir uh, to say few words about today's conference adnyana timiran dasya jnana anjana shalakaya चक्षुरुन मिलितम ये ना तस्मे श्री गुरुवे न महा फॉर ऑल दिस इयर्स मोर देन 50 इयर्स पुटिंग द अंजन ऑफ नॉलेज इन आवर आईज एंड रिमूविंग इग्नोरेंस ऑफ इलिटरेसी और यू नो द शॉर्टकमिंग्स एज पीडियाट्रिशियंस एंड द वर्क हैज बीन डन फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स मोर देन 50 इयर्स माय रिस्पेक्टफुल रिगार्ड्स टू डॉ मृदुला फडके मैडम पन्नास वर्ष का थोड़ी थोड़ी नहीं है and those who are ugs and pgs let me just tell you you may not know you must be wondering who is this lady we heard somewhere that she was muhs vice chancellor but from first standard to md not even once she has missed first rank yeah mbbs first mbbs all gold medals second mbbs all gold medals third mbbs all gold medals again md dc so whatever exam she has appeared she has topped only first never ever second can you imagine that kind of and the publications she is not only into social pediatrics this is this she is a top most developmental pediatrician she is a geneticist yes, yes. you name the sub specialty of pediatrics and madam is there so we are really lucky to have you madam over here and your blessings are there so asha ya madam cha mala ek divas phone aala 
उपेंद्र तू महापेडिकॉन मध्ये कधी जातोयस मी सांगितलं मॅडम फ्रायडेला असं असं सेशन आहे आणि इनॉग्रेशन आहे तर मी फ्रायडेला जातो नाही तू गुरुवारी येतोयस नो क्वेश्चन अँड डॉक्टर आर डी पाटील डॉक्टर आनंद देशपांडे हर स्टुडंट आर हिअर दे वुड वाउच जरी मी मॅडमचा डायरेक्ट स्टुडंट नाही तरी एकलव्यगिरी भरपूर वेळ केली आहे मॅडमचे इनडायरेक्टली खूप वेळा पण शिकलोय तेव्हा मॅडमनी एखादा सांगितलं की हो की त्याच्या पुढे नाही अँड देन वॉट वॉज दिस आय एम आय वॉज शुअर की काहीतरी चांगल्या गोष्टीसाठीच असेल सो दिस वॉज ईसीडी वर्कशॉप सो थँक्यू मॅडम फॉर अलाउविंग मी टू पार्टिसिपेट इन दिस वर्कशॉप सो दॅट्स अ ग्रेट थिंग दॅट्स अ ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर मी ऑल्सो सो ॲज एव्हरीबडी हॅज सेट आय थिंक लेट्स ऑल एन्जॉय द एसीडी डेलिब्रेशन समबडी सेट द डिज आर नॉट द पिडियाट्रिशियन्स इमिजिएट पिडियाट्रिशियन सो दे आर स्टुडंट्स अँड दे आर गोइंग टू गेट मॅरिड अँड मे बी बिकमिंग टीचर्स पण त्याच्या पुढेही जाऊन मी एक स्टेप सांगेन की आपण सगळेजण कुठेही असताना लहान मुलांशी थोडा वेळ तरी खेळतोच आपले भाचे मंडळी असतील शेजारी पाजारी असतील रस्त्यात स्टॉप वर आपल्याला आवडतं आणि बेसिकली वी एन्जॉय आम्ही पिडियाट्रिशियन तेवढ्यासाठी होतो की वी एन्जॉय किड्स बिंग विथ किड्स सो जेवढे तुमची दोन ते तीन मिनिटं जरी तुम्ही इंटरॅक्शन कराल ना कुठेही असाल लेट इट बी अ प्लेजरेबल एक्सपिरियन्स फॉर दॅट चाईल्ड वेअर यू आर सिटिंग इन द फ्लाईट तुमच्या पुढच्या सीट वर एक लहान बाळ आहे ते मागे बळत आहे यू कॅन मेक दॅट मोमेंट दोज वन आवर टाइम ऑफ फ्लाईट टाइम ऑल्सो एन्जॉयबल फॉर दॅट चाईल्ड एवढं जरी आपल्याला ह्याच्यातनं शिकता आलं आय थिंक वी हॅव डन इट सो ह्या प्रकारे आपण करत गेलो तो दॅन दे चिल्ड्रन ग्रो अप दे आर इन टू कम्प्लीट पॉझिटिव्ह माइंड सेट अँड दिस इज द वे वी वॉन्ट टू डेव्हलप अवर सोसायटी अँड देन ओनली वी कॅन प्रॉस्पर इन अवर कंट्री आय थिंक दिस आर द सिम्पल टेक होम मेसेजेस अँड यू वुड बी लर्निंग मच मोर अबाउट इट इन द ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ टाइम सो अगेन थँक्यू आणि महापेडिकोनच्या सगळ्या रथी महारथी डॉक्टर हेमंत गंगोलिया डॉक्टर रमाकांत पाटील डॉक्टर अमोल पवार डॉक्टर शर्मिला कुलकर्णी शी इज माय क्लासमेट अँड शी इज द सायंटिफिक कमिटी चेअरपर्सन अ बिग राऊंड ऑफ अप्लॉज फॉर हर ड्राफ्टिंग अ ग्रेट प्रोग्राम डॉक्टर मिलिंद बराडिया हे सगळं प्रचंड काम करत आहेत गेले कित्येक दिवस दिवस रात्र इतक्या प्रकारे आणि रमाकांत बद्दल खास म्हणजे तो आमचा एबी मेंबर पण आहे बावीस आणि तेवीस ला पण प्रचंड मताधिक्याने निवडून आला तिथेही कॉन्ट्रीब्युट करतो शिवाय हे करतो शिवाय प्रॅक्टिस करतो आय रिअली वंटर हॅट्स ऑफ टू यू रमाकांत फॉर डुईंग ऑल दिस थिंग्स ओव्हर द इयर्स सो पुन्हा एकदा पूर्ण नाशिक टीम महापेडिकॉन टीम वर्कशॉप टीम आणि अर्थात डॉक्टर सोनावणे इथले एच ओडी अँड एव्हरीबडी आय थिंक मॅडम अर्थात पाटील मॅडम किती छान तुम्ही वैद्यकीय महाविद्यालय डेव्हलप केलंय सो रिअली हॅपी टू बी पार्ट ऑफ इट दिस इज माय मेडन विजिट टू दिस कॉलेज बट लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू कम अगेन सो थँक्यू सो मच अँड लेट्स ऑल हॅव हॅपी लर्निंग थँक्यू in the say uh, we we uh, before ending the session the most important talk that is dr mudula fadke madam's guidance on this tc yeah. yes ma'am we are waiting for waiting to hear you please ma'am tikun ji anek aashirwad ani aap tyacha peksha mothe va
आमचे सर्वांचे ऍक्च्युली आभार त्याआधीच असं म्हटलं ना की तू नंतर फोन कर आणि पहिल्याच वेळेत फोन उचलला आणि म्हणजे मॅडम म्हणून वरती मॅडम चीफ मेंटर जसे पिक्चर मध्ये अमिताभ बच्चन असतो तसं आमच्यासाठी मॅडम आहे इथे माझा क्रम चुकू शकतो पण सर्व सर्व मान्यवर आहे माझे म्हणजे रिस्पेक्टफुल आहेत सेकंड डीन मॅडम आमचे डॉक्टर मुनाल पाटील मॅडम त्यांनी सहा वर्कशॉप वर्कशॉपसाठी इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर ऑडिओ व्हिज्युअल एड्स त्यांचं सर्व बऱ्याचशा गोष्टी एका याच्या विनंतीवर त्यांनी मान्य करून दिल्या आणि आम्हाला एवढा मोठा इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर व रिसोर्सेस उपलब्ध करून दिले त्याबद्दल डॉक्टर मुरुनाल पाटील मॅडम डीन मॅडम यांचे ऑर्गनायझिंग टीम कडून आभार मानतो तीन नंबरला मी ऍक्च्युली सागर सोनोने आम माझं सहकारी आमचे दोघांचे आडनाव सोनवणे पेशंट पण चुकतात एकमेकांचे पेशंट इकडे तिकडे जातात आम्ही प्रॅक्टिस करायला पण इकडे तिकडे जवळच आहेत आणि ह्या कॉन्फरन्स मध्ये पण ऑर्गनायझिंग से डॉक्टर राजी नायर मॅडम ज्या युनिसेफच्या न्यूट्रिशनच्या ची फिल्ड आहेत त्यांचे पण मी आभार मानतो त्यांनी मला वेळोवेळी डॉक्युमेंट्स आणि ज्या नेसेसरी गोष्टी होत्या त्या मला पुरवल्या आणि त्या